Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Tony with the Quick Tech Solutions channel. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to add an access point and a switch to the Grandstream GCC 6010. Now, in addition to that, I'm also gonna show you how to add Wi-Fi networks and tag those Wi-Fi networks to the appropriate VLANs that we set up back in the first video in the series. If you happen to miss that video, I'll put a link to that video up above as well as down in the video description. Let's go ahead and get started with the process. Okay, let's take a quick look now at the physical connections and then we'll get into the configuration. So looking at what I have here in front, we have this cable right here. It's connecting the GCC 6010 down to the GWN 7801P PoE switch. We have another cable here, which is going to the GWN 7660 access point. We have this white cable here. This is my computer. It's plugged directly into the 7801P switch. And then we have this black cable here, which is plugged into the GCC 6010 port five, which is the WAN port. So this cable is supplying the internet service. Let's switch over to the computer now and we'll get started with the actual process. So we're gonna sign in using the credentials that we created in part one of this series. And now we're going to come over to the networking nodes tab. So we can either do that from up top here, the little menu or on the dashboard page here. Let's click on network nodes. And this is where we're going to actually adopt the switch and adopt the access point. Now we are going to need for the switch, the initial password. And I believe I have that saved. Let me just make sure I have that pulled up here so I can enter that. and I believe it's this one here. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to the AP management. We'll start with that one first. So you can see here, it says pair AP or take over AP. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on pair AP. You see the GWN 7660 appears here in the list. We're gonna select that and we're gonna go ahead and say save. And now it says here, a successful operation. So we'll give that a, a chance to come online. The device is rebooting right now. While that's rebooting, let's come down to switch management and select on switch. And we're gonna press take over device. All right, the switch is back online. You can see we have one switch adopted. We have our access point adopted. It's now time to create our Wi-Fi networks. So if we refer back to our network diagram, there's three networks we have to create. We have to create our main Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi for the IoT network, and a Wi-Fi for the guest network. So we're gonna stay here within the network node tab, and we're gonna come over to Wi-Fi management in the left menu. Then we're gonna click on SSIDs, and we're gonna click the blue add button to add our first network. And then we're gonna enable the Wi-Fi to make sure the network is enabled. We're gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it main Wi-Fi for this demonstration. You can call it whatever you wish for your environment. And then I'm not gonna turn on associated VLAN for the main network. By default, it's going to take addresses in the 192.168.80 network, which is VLAN one, but we don't have to specify that. We're gonna leave the SSID band set to dual band, meaning it's gonna broadcast both a 2.4 and a 5G network. We're gonna come down to access security. We're gonna give it a password. And then we are going to leave everything else the same. Look at advanced. We're gonna leave this all the same. If I was creating a Wi-Fi network for a voice network and I wanted to give voice priority, I would turn voice enterprise on here. But for our main Wi-Fi, we're going to leave it just as is. And then under device management, you can see that this network that we're creating is going to be associated with the GWN 7660 access point. So let's go ahead and click on save. And we have our first Wi-Fi created. We're going to do it two more times for the IoT network and now the guest network. But we have to do something a little different for those. So we're gonna come into here, we're gonna 
enable the Wi-Fi. I'm going to call this IoT Wi-Fi. And then we are going to turn on associated VLAN now because we want to make sure that when guests or devices connect to the IoT network, they're pulling an address in the 192.168.10 network, which is our IoT network. So we're going to tag it by turning this on. We're going to click the VLAN drop down and we're going to select the IoT network, which basically is saying give the devices an address in that 192.168.10 range. I'm going to set the SSID band to 2.4 because a lot of times the actual um, devices don't like 5G, especially if you're trying to get them to connect successfully to the Wi-Fi. If they sense that 5G is also being broadcast, they will fail to connect. So for IoT devices on an IoT network, my recommendation would be set it to 2.4 only, I guess as devices keep advancing there's there eventually will be able to recognize the 5g but for compatibility with some of the older iot devices it's safe to leave it set to 2.4 under access security we're going to go ahead and give it a password and then everything else we're going to leave the same again under device management you can see that this wi-fi network is being associated with the gwn 7660 we'll go ahead and say save and then we're going to repeat the process for the guest network with one additional change. So let's hit add. Let's turn the Wi-Fi on. We'll call this guest. And again, you can name your Wi-Fi networks, whatever works for you. We are going to turn on the associated VLAN. And again, we're going to associate this Wi-Fi network with the guest network so that when guests sign on to the Wi-Fi, they'll pull an address in the 192.168.20 network. I'm going to leave the SSID band set to dual band. It's fine. It could broadcast both under access security. We come in, make sure we give it a password. And then the only other change I want to make here is under client isolation. I want to change it from closed, which basically closed is all the devices can com communicate with each other. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Allow access between wireless clients. We're going to change this to radio, which basically is saying it's going to all act, all wireless clients will be isolated from each other. So there you go. So that's what we're going to go with. And we're going to go ahead and say save. And now we have our three Wi-Fi networks created tagged to the appropriate VLANs according to the networks that we set up. So we have completed that process. So now the next thing we're going to do is I just want to take you in as a bonus to the access point configuration and the switch configuration and show you how to set static IP so that you can always find those devices on your network. So let's switch back here to the super source and we're going to come into Let's start with the AP management. Let's start with the access point. Let's click on the GWN 7660 and come over here to the right under the operations area and click the edit button. And then we're going to come here and we're going to turn on static IPv4. And you can set some other settings here, but for now, for again, for the purpose of this beginner video, we're going to leave everything set to the default. But under static IPv4, we're going to give it a static IP address of 192.168.80.2. Our router is 80.1. We're going to give it a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And then we'll give it a gateway address of 192.168.80.1, which is the GCC 6010. And we can go with preferred DNS of 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. And then everything else could stay the same. And we're going to go ahead and say save. The access point should provision and take on the new IP address. You can see now it cleared the screen and it should refresh and hopefully come back with the new IP address. I could see the lights are blinking here, so it's provisioning. So 
So we'll give that a chance to update. Let's come down to the switch management. Click on switch. Similar process, not exactly the same. We're going to select switch. We're going to come over to the edit button in the operations area. And this time we could actually give the switch a name here. So we'll call this test switch. And then we're going to come down here to VLAN interface. We're going to click on add, and this is now to add the static IP. We're going to say which VLAN we want. We're going to go with the default VLAN one, and we're going to say static IP address of 192.168.80. And we'll make this one three because we made the access point two and our router is one. So we'll make this dot three, and then we're going to go here 24, which is our 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. For now, I'm going to leave IPv6 turned off and we're going to go ahead and click on save. And now we have our switch with our updated address of 192.168.80.3. And we should have our access point now with an updated address as well. And there you go, 192.168.80.2. So there you go. This was a video to show you how to adopt access points, how to adopt the switch, how to create the Wi-Fi networks, associate them with the VLANs, and then as promised, also show you how to set a static IP address for both the access point and the device. I hope you enjoyed part two of this video series. Let me know, please put your comments down below. Please consider subscribing if you're finding any value in this video. And again, if you'd like to see continuing content like this, please click the video on that screen. And thank you so much for watching.